President Biden is meeting with the Prime Minister of Iraq at the White House today. The scheduled meeting follows Iran's unprecedented airstrikes against Israel over the weekend. Iran fired hundreds of missiles and drones towards Israel over the weekend, but the vast majority of them were intercepted before entering Israeli territory. Officials say U.S. aircraft operating out of bases in Jordan and Saudi Arabia shot down dozens of those drones. As the president told Prime Minister Netanyahu on the phone Saturday night, this was an extraordinary success. Uh, and you ought to look at it as an extraordinary success. Israel proved that it's not alone, and they proved that they're militarily superior to Iran. Uh, and they, they ought to consider what that success actually means in the region. Uh, there's no reason for this to escalate further. The president doesn't want a wider war in the region. Everything he's been doing since October 7th has been designed to pre prevent that. And of course, we're not looking for a war with Iran. Israel reported only minor damage to a military base. The airstrikes marked Iran's first ever direct offensive against Israel. Iran carried out the attack in response to a deadly airstrike on its consulate in Syria earlier this month. Israel is believed to have carried out that attack, but has not yet claimed responsibility for it. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayyib is following all of this from Tel Aviv, Israel. MTS, is great to have you. So talk to us about the reaction across Israel. I'm sure it's a big sigh of relief for people. Liliana, it's really fascinating. You know, here we were on Saturday night into early Saturday morning, and history was made in the most shocking way. For the first time, in the Islamic Republic of Iran's history, its 44-year history, it launched a direct attack on Israel, a country it has long had a very, very fractious relationship with, very, very brutal relationship with. And there we had it. We had over 300 cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and drones launched from Iran targeting Israel. It's extraordinary. In fact, we were standing here on this very balcony, and we could not only see some of the interceptions happening, we could also see aircraft coming in from other countries as they aided Israel in repelling that Iranian assault. Now, the mood here in Israel, as you can imagine, was one of absolute worry and concern. But what's really interesting is over the last several hours is things have kind of changed. Mm. You know, we have to remember on October 7th, when Hamas carried out that brutal attack in which 1,200 people were killed, 200 people were taken hostage, that Israelis in that moment, and for the several months since then, six months since then, had lost a large amount of faith in their military, in the people who are there to protect them because it failed on that day. And they're still living with that trauma. However, this weekend, Israel's missile defense and support from the US, UK, France, Jordan, repelled that Iranian assault, which I think has given Israelis confidence in a way that they haven't had in a long time. But there's still a huge amount of worry. And that worry is because Israeli leaders still want to carry out a retaliatory strike against Iran even though the U.S. has said, don't do it. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about, MTOs, because I think that the whole world is kind of holding their breath. The U.S. has urged Israel to just practice restraint. You know, this was a retaliatory attack after uh, that, that is alleged attack by Israel um, in Syria onto that uh, diplomatic uh, building. So do you, and from your reporting, expect that Israel will in fact respond and, you know, and ignore the urging from the United States and keep this going? I think we have to accept the fact that there is a more than likely chance that Israel will retaliate. What that looks like, we still don't know. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Not least because the president of the United States, Joe Biden, has said to Israel, listen, you've won here. You not only were able to carry out that strike in, in Syria two weeks ago, in which a number of Iranian Revolutionary Guard commanders were killed, you were also able to successfully repel this Iranian assault. 
You've won here. That's what the president said to Prime Minister Netanyahu. But the mood here in Israel is very different. And we have to remember that Prime Minister Netanyahu has a coalition government which is comprised of what has been described as the most extreme far-right government in Israel's history. This is a hawkish coalition that he presides over, and they want a response. Hmm. And so Israel's leadership has said they are going to respond, but they haven't said when, they haven't said how, but it's very likely that at some point they will. But again, we have the U.S. and other Western powers, and including powers in the Middle East that Israel wants to be aligned with saying, don't do this. The war in Gaza has been devastating. If you open up a much larger war with Iran, it will inflame this entire region. And to add to that, a senior uh, official for the, White, for the Biden administration told CBS News that if that happens, MTS, uh, the U.S. will not participate. Thank you so much for your reporting.